Amiga, what do you want to do today? Let's try to explain the neighborhood. All right, let's do that. This is the Amiga Joyboard, which is probably the oldest thing at my house except for myself. People who know a bit about the Amiga's history probably know that the company used to make peripherals and games for the Atari VCS 2600 in its early stages, which made sense because it helped them earning a reputation in the gaming business while they were secretly developing the ultimate game console. The Joyboard was released in 1982 which is remarkable because it predates more modern and well-known balance boards like the Wii Fit or the Stealth Core Trainer by the decades. It came with a skiing game called Mogul Maniac and was promoted by former Olympic skier Susie Chaffee. The Joyboard is essentially a regular digital joystick with a mechanism built into a balance board and without any fire buttons so you will be able to use the same directions as you would with any other joystick. If you want to use fire buttons, you actually connect another joystick to the additional port built into the board and use the buttons on that plugged in stick. So I have been wondering why I haven't seen people connecting the joyboard to the Amiga. It's just an Atari joystick with a DB9 plug, so it should just work. I guess it's probably a matter of so few people actually owning a joyboard. So I got myself this adapter to run a few fun experiments and develop something myself. To get a first idea about the joyboard, I decided to study the manual and play Mogul Maniac. I only had the board itself, but fortunately my friend Bob still had the manuals and was so kind to send them over from Michigan so I can show them here. The next step was to find the Mogul Maniac ROM online and run it in the Stella emulator. Now behold my amazing performance playing a slalom skiing game on the joyboard for the first time. I have to say I found it surprisingly difficult and fun. Next I tried to figure out what playing positions would work well. Standing on the board worked by far the best. The lotus position is uncomfortable for an untrained individual like me and planking did not work for me at all. Based on these small experiments I put together a little prototype of a joyboard game on the Amiga. I am not the best pixel artist in the world but for a quick little game my rudimentary drawing skills should be sufficient. A sky with a few clouds as a background, a meditating guru on a flying carpet and a couple of fruit that the guru catches while riding the flying carpet. The prototype was written in C as I typically do on the Amiga and uses playfield graphics for the background and sprites for the player and fruit. The advantage of having young children at home is that they are always eager to try video games. So my daughter volunteered as my tester and gave me valuable feedback. Finally it is time to try this out on real Amiga hardware. I am using my A1200 mainly because I can use a flash card in the PCMCIA port to transfer my game quickly. I developed this for an emulated plain vanilla A500 system so it should run the same on all Amiga systems. As you can see, the joyboard works just as well as any joystick and the motion is smoother on real hardware than in the emulator. This was a fun little project and I finally got the answer to the question whether I can run an Amiga joyboard on an Amiga computer. Would I pursue this idea further? I am not sure. On one hand the possibilities are intriguing, on the other hand there are not many joyboards around and the board's construction is a bit too flimsy so they might not be suited for long term use. This was a video about a somewhat exotic but innovative peripheral from the early days of Amiga and hopefully I'll see you in one of my next videos.
See you next time.